Hi guys, today I'm going to dig deeper into the GraphQL context object and the custom schema directives. Let's start from a few background words about them. In the context object, you can save any additional information required by a resolver functions. The schema directives are made for overriding the schema logic. Together, they play nicely in authentication systems. So uh, today I will show you two examples of authentication. One, only using the context object, and the second one, using the context and the schema directive. So here, in our example, I will use the context for passing the authorization token to the resolver functions. To achieve that, I have to pass the context callback to the Apollo server constructor. Context callback has access to a few parameters. To me, the interesting one is the express request object. There, I can access the token header and pass the token to the resolvers using the auth token key. To make things simple, I will create a dummy authentication system. I won't implement any JWT authorization. Instead, I will be focused on how things work on the GraphQL side. So here, I will create the tokens array containing two valid tokens. I will consider the first as the admin token and the second one to be the regular user's token. Then I will create two methods, one for authentication and one for authorization. To check if the user is authenticated, I am checking if the provided token is included in my tokens array. To check if user is authorized, I have to check if the token fits role. For the admin role, it must match the first token. For regular user, any token from array is considered valid. So with that setup, we are ready to go. We can now use this function inside the resolver functions. So my idea is as follows. Only an authenticated user will be allowed to fetch details of a movie. And only the admin user will be allowed to add a new movie. To implement that, we have to have access to the context object in the resolver function. The context object is passed to the resolver function on the third position. So I will add it to the callback and I will name it shortly ctx. I can now extract the auth token from the context object. Remember, it's totally custom what data holds context object. We have passed there the auth token at the beginning of the video. Having the auth token in the scope of the function allows us to call the isAuthenticated method. If the user is not authenticated, let's throw some error. I don't want to resolver to continue if the user is not authenticated. Now let's do the same thing in the create movie mutation. Let's add the context object to resolver and call the isAuthenticated method. Here we also want to check if user has rights to create movie. So next Let's invoke the isAuthorized method. Pass the token there and set required role to be equal to admin. Again, if the return is equal to false, let's throw error. That's all what we need. Now we can check it in the Apollo Studio console. I have the create movie mutation prepared here in the console. The only missing thing is the token. Here in the headers tab, I'm setting the token to be equal dummy token2. When I execute the mutation, you will see the error as a response. It says you have not enough permissions. Great, it works as we expected. When I will change the token to an appropriate one, I should be able to create a movie. Let's see. Yes, now it works. We can also check what will happen if we set the wrong token. Now we have the authentication error. Great, works ideally. Now let's check if the get movie by ID query is also properly protected. Cool, it also works.
I have shown you how to add a simple authentication using context object. But to be honest, it's not the best implementation yet. Uh, we only protected one query and one mutation. How would it look like if we have a large schema with a lot of private queries? Then we would have to copy and paste the same code in all the resolvers we want to protect. The code duplication is something bad that we should avoid in most scenarios. But there is a way to refactor it in a better way. We will create a custom schema directive to control the resolver access. The directive decorates parts of GraphQL schema with additional configuration. So, to add a custom directive, I have to install two additional packages. Those packages are required to override the schema. I will install the GraphQL tools slash schema and GraphQL tools slash utils packages. After the installation, I will import the required methods. Don't bother now what they do. It will be clear within next three minutes. To create a custom directive, you have to use reserved keyword directive. Then, after the add sign, provide the name and input parameters of your directive. In our case, it will be an auth directive having a role as input parameter. The last thing is to tell Apollo server on what part of schema we can use this annotation. There are plenty of places like interfaces, enums, fields, objects, etc. In our case, it will be a field definition. To use that directive, let's scroll down to the get movie by ID query. We want to have it accessible only for an authenticated user. To do so, I will annotate the query with our directive and I will set the role to be equal to user. Next, let's do the same thing to the create movie imitation, but this time let's set the role to be equal to admin. Great, we have the schema ready. The only missing puzzle is implementation of this directive. It's the same thing as it is with the queries and mutation. We have a schema definition and then we have to create a function implementing required logic. First thing what we have to do is to create executable schema. Until now, it was done by Apollo server in the background, but our current task is to override this schema. So I will call the make executable schema method from the installed package and I will pass the type devs and resolvers to it. Then I will replace the type devs and resolvers in Apollo server constructor with a new schema. Next, I will create a schema transformer function and I will call it the auth directive transformer. As the parameters, it will take the schema and the directive name. Inside this function, we will return the result of map schema function. Map schema function comes from installed package and it does what the name says. It maps our schema definition. This function takes two parameters, the schema and the custom schema mapper. Our task is to implement this mapper. The mapper will be iterating all over possible locations in the schema. We are interested only in object fields because that's where our directive lives. Each location has a callback function associated with. Mm, the function takes the config object. Inside the callback function, we will call the last imported method from installed packages. It will be a get directive method. Here, we are searching for our directive. If our directive is present on a specific field, we want to add a custom logic to that field. From the field config, we can access a default field resolver. It will be useful in the near future, so I will unwrap it and rename it to resolve. Then, from the auth directive, I will unwrap the role object. Role object is just a string containing our required role. Finally, we are ready to implement the core of the authorization logic. We will override the default resolver of our field config.
In the resolver function, instead of returning a specific value, first we will check if the user is authenticated and authorized. So for that, I will take the auth token from the context object and I will copy and paste the authentication method inside the resolver function. I will only refactor them a little. I will use the role from the directive. The logic is the same, nothing has changed. Last thing to do is to call the default resolver if the user is authenticated and return its result. So having the auth directive transformer, we are ready to transfer the schema. I have set the schema as a let variable because it will be overwritten. Finally, it will be equal to the result of our directive transformer function call. Lastly, let's remove the authorization check from the resolvers. Now we don't need them. We have the custom schema annotation. The Apollo server will call our schema logic in our behalf each time the user hits the specific field. So now we can test it out and verify if we didn't break anything. So that's it for today. It's a great piece of knowledge. I hope you find it useful. Thank you and see you next time.